that being said, I know you have another question. I know you have another question. So what's your what's your next question, man? <laughs> next question is uh what's some tips to scale from two teams in an organization that is new to agile transformation, right? Mm-hmm. So um yeah, they're they're in they're using safe environment, mm-hmm. but like the scrum master before me kind of like um kind of held a hand and moving kind of slow slower than what i would do right because mm-hmm. if i see somebody especially with developers if i know they're talented smart and you know because i was a developer mm-hmm. you know using any kind of project management tool is like really simple right it's nothing to google because we can develop you know websites for these billion dollar companies we can easily use a project management tool right after mm-hmm. some you know some sprints mm-hmm. but you know some of the guys just like I can tell they knew what they was doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Especially offshore people always use uh, project management tools, right? Yeah. So when I see talent and I hear it and they're working as a team, mm-hmm. right? And still new to Agile, but already have that team, you know, history. I'm like, yo, let's uh, give the power to them, right? So mm-hmm. that's my goal right now. We're making that, I'm replacing the Scrum Master, right? Um, they're going to fall off and I'm going to completely take over the team. So today I, I was uh, the manager wanted me to start leading the teams the daily stand up. So I went ahead and put power into their hands, right? So mm-hmm. and it was a success. Um, they knew exactly what to do, and I'm just like, you know, they just didn't volunteer themselves, right? The scrum master would always facilitate and share their screen, and you know, that's not me, right? I'm like, well, if my job is, you know, and the scrum guy, according to my job, is to work myself out of a job. That means I need to empower y'all quicker now and then later because the, the organization wants y'all to be up and running, you know, as independent teams. So that way they can scale to bring in more pieces of the organization, right? So I mean, I mean, I mean, maybe I'm just rushing. I don't know, but I'm trying to chill. But you know, if I see an opportunity, I like to take it. You know, so so see, you know. chill for me for a second, right? Chill for me, <laughs> chill for me right? Let me, ask, let me ask you a question, man. When was the last time, be honest with me, that you read the Scrum Guide front to back? Mm, the first one, or the second one. Well, there's been there's been like there's been like <laughs> five to ten of them, right? Uh, so <laughs> we're not talking about the 2021. Any one of them. Okay. When was the last time? You <laughs> okay. Read, right, front to back. Twenty the 2017 one was uh, probably like four months ago. Okay. Now. Now. If you remember in the Scrum Guide, the Scrum Master's job is to enable and support Scrum. Right? Right. So now, when you say what you what you said, right, is going beyond that, right? Because you want to jump over here and right now if the team needs your support in doing scrum by getting back to the basics Mm -hmm. that's part of what you should be doing it's the basics like as far as basic goes like how basic uh... as basic as basic gets right because if they need your help in terms of facilitating meetings like setting them up for example, mm-hmm. making sure that that meeting is more effective for them accomplishing whatever goal we have here. Mm-hmm. If they need your help with those kind of things, isn't that your job to do until they get to that place mm-hmm. where you can work yourself out of that job, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because yes, yeah, so, yeah. understand where you're yeah. at, right? Mm-hmm. You can have two teams here, right? One team could be I'm perfect at Scrum. We're absolutely mm-hmm. ready to go. The right. other team could be, ah, uh, we're kind of newish, we're kind of skittish, we're kind of whatever it is, right? And you may need to do a little bit more hand-holding with them, right? Right. And so it's one of those things where what I want you to do, let's, let's just put scaling to the side for a second. Mm-hmm. What I want you to do is I want you to move at the pace of the team not move at your pace. So it's exactly how you said it. One team is ready to go, and then the other one 
is like I'm just chilling on right now. Mm-hmm. But uh, one of the guys or one of the guys when like kind of got into a little debate with the old Scrum Master with doing things himself and being independent because mm-hmm. he also has a Scrum Master cert and he's an enterprise architect. So he it seemed like he was kind of getting emotional about like, hey, I can do this, you know, and the other Scrum Master was like, no, I do it for you. And he's like, no, I'm going to do it. And I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, with him, I feel like, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to take that power away from him because he, you know, he's like ready to go. He's already doing user stories and stuff. So I was like going to share that, you know, hey, do you want to take over the daily stand up? And if you need any help, I'm here. You know, I don't want to like. Now, would I have to take over certain things? So what you're saying is I want to go ahead and groom them or better term, help to position them to be better. So one day they can take this over and do this with without my help. Do I have an issue with that? Not at all. But if you're going to do that, then I want you to to do yourself and them a favor. Mm-hmm. I want you to make sure that you are working a plan with them. Mm-hmm. Like, here's where they want to go in their career. Can you help them get there? If that person is interested in being a scrum master, there's no reason why you can't help them get there in terms of being a scrum master. Does that make sense? Right. And so in terms of helping them get there, it is going to be a major plus for them. It's going to be a major plus for them because what they're doing is that they're growing because maybe the job that they want to have is to be that scrum master is to be maybe leading a team in a direction. And so you can actually help them grow. And that Mm -hmm. would be beneficial for them as well as for you because every time you train up somebody, you actually help yourself grow, right? So like, as I pass this knowledge on to you, I'm actually growing through passing this on to you, right? You know, if I'm taking an exam, I know that I'm ready to take that exam once I'm able to teach the class, once I'm able to teach people the concept, right? And so all you really want to do is just position them to be the best that they can be. And it sounds like you can do that. It sounds like you can do that. And it sounds like they're interested, which is way more of a benefit because there's a lot of people that just aren't interested. And if you have somebody that's interested, I want you to take advantage of that and help to position them, help them position them, right? Um, and they may never end up being a scrum master, but if they if they know scrum, they're going to help every other scrum master out in the future. And teams that may not have a solid scrum master, they can help out with all those things, right? So these right. are nothing but pluses, nothing but pluses, okay? Now, mm-hmm. that doesn't answer your question, okay? That doesn't answer <laughs> your question. <laughs> nah, but that was good, though. I love it. Uh, love it, man. So it, it just shows me I'm going in the right direction and, um, you know, that I'm doing good versus you know the opposite of good (laughs) the opposite of good well no i think you're doing the right thing i think you're moving in the right direction and moving in the right direction is a plus now in terms of your other question about scaling a team my statement to you is always follow the guideline of that size of the development team Mm -hmm. remember that development team is three to nine right and mm-hmm. for me, in terms of the different studies that I've seen over the years, the right size development team, in terms of uh, the right size for a self-organizing team, is somewhere between four and six people. Four and between six? Four and six, yeah. So there's, there's a guidance for Scrum of three to nine people mm-hmm. for the development team. But to put that to right. the side for a moment, other right. studies show, study after study shows, that the right size of a self-organizing team is four to six people. So now, um, and it's interesting because the question that you're asked, that you just asked, I actually had a six month review with a client today. Okay. And <laughs> this is a question that came up because they're starting to add people to their teams and they're getting bigger. And so now they're going to have to make the decision to divide them and they're going to reach a point where that team is nine. And I told him, once that team reaches nine, you're probably at the right place where you can make that decision to split. And I, I want you to think about that because 
if it's four to six is about the right size, that means if you split it nine, you got one is four and one is five. Okay. And really right. that split is not because the question they asked me is that split based on front end, back end, or something that's an interim step in terms of development? No. When you split, you want to make sure both teams are self-sufficient and can deliver without needing to talk much to each other. Deliver right. without having to need each other to deliver, right? So you want two self-sufficient teams, two self-organizing teams once you decide to split. As long as you think about that, you are actually positioning yourself the right way. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yes, sir.